Hey guys, I'm Pastor Corinne, and I'm so glad you decided to join us again for our online kids service. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're taking one week to talk specifically about worship and where we can worship God. So before we get started, I need everybody to stand up with me, and I'm going to teach you today's takeaway. Now today's takeaway says, I can worship God anytime and anywhere. Okay, so I need you guys to join me. If you're not up out of your seats, go ahead and get up out of your seats. And we're going to say this as loud as we can. And I know that you guys are going to do it with me through the camera, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. I can worship God anytime and anywhere. Great job, guys. Go ahead and have a seat. And we are going to have a great time today learning about worship. This my name is Mr. Jared, and I'm here to play a game with you guys because it's game time. So we're going to be playing a game called Getting Dicey Worship Edition. We played this before, but this is the worship edition. And I'm going to show you the movements. There's going to be five movements, and I'm going to teach you to them right now. So our first one's going to be praying. Second one's going to be raising hands. So you're going to put your hands up to the sky, both of them. The third one's going to be kneeling. So you're going to kneel like you're worshiping. And then fourth is going to be clapping. <laughs> Fifth one is going to be jumping. I can't really jump <laughs> because I have a boot on, but I want you guys to be jumping. And if it lands on the number six, then everyone's safe. So I'm going to go through that one more time so everyone can remember. First one is going to be praying. Second one's going to be raising hands. Third one's going to be kneeling. <laughs> Fourth one's going to be clapping. Fifth one's going to be jumping. And if it lands on a six, then everyone's safe. So again, the rules of these games are... If it lands on the action you are doing, then you have to sit down and you are out for the game. But hopefully you guys are be able to beat us and just win the game. I'm cheering for you guys. So Pastor Crane's gonna roll it. And you guys pick your action. And <laughs> it landed on jumping. So if you were jumping, you can take a seat. Sorry, hopefully cheer on for your sibling if you have one so this is going to be round two if you are kneeling you can sit down we're going to do a couple more rounds it, it was kneeling again so if you decided to kneel you can sit down hope i wish you guys good luck pick your action if you were praying or doing the action of praying, then you can sit down. And we're going to do one last one. So I'm wishing you guys all good luck if you're still in. <laughs> jumping. So if you were jumping, you can sit down. If you guys won, give yourself a big round of applause. And you guys won today's game. I'll see you guys soon.
are here for another service, and we just decided to some, do something a little bit different today. So I've got Pastor Yvonne here, and I've got Mr. Jared here, and we wanted to talk about worship, and we thought it'd be fun to kind of have a conversation and just talk about some different ways that we like to worship and uh, things that we love about God and, and different ways that uh, we've been worshiping God that are kind of different since things are a little bit different right now. So um, I wanted to get the conversation started, and if we're going to talk about worship, I thought it would be good to start with talking about what worship is. So worship is anything that you do that declares the worth of the Lord, which deepens your relationship with Jesus and helps others to follow him as well. So that's kind of like a basic description of what worship is, but I wanted to ask you guys what is worship to you? So what does worship mean to you guys? Okay, I'll go first. Um, to me, it's just, you know, worshiping God, it's just like spending time with him, you know, thanking him for all the things that he has done and, you know, just telling him how amazing he is and loving him, living for him. Yeah, that's awesome. What about you, Jared? Just like Pastor Yvonne said, um, Worship for me is a way that I can be thankful to God and just really just show and appreciate him for everything that he's done for me. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think there's kind of two aspects to worship for me. I love worshiping God because of what it does for me. Like, I feel good when I worship God. I feel at peace. Um, I feel happy. I feel joy, like those things. But also there's the aspect of worship isn't just for me. It's for God. You know, we worship God even when we don't feel like worshiping God, when we're having, like, really down days, God still deserves our worship. So worship is definitely for us, but it's also for God. So there's kind of two sides to that. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've talked about why, uh, what worship is, let's talk about why we worship God. And I want to read to you guys out of Psalm 47, 2, it says, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great king of all the earth. And, um, you know, that's why we worship God, because of who he is. You know, he is a creator. He is the king of the world. And um, he deserves our worship. So why do you worship God? Um, I mean, I worship God, obviously, because of who he is. And um, like I was saying, not just because of for me, but for him. And uh, one of the things I remember, like even from being a young kid, I learned um, this word that is used to describe God and it's omnipotent. And I think I liked it just because it was like this really yeah. big word that was like really cool to say. Um, but it means that God is all powerful. Right. And that's something that always really um, stuck out to me that, you know, even when I feel like weak, God is all powerful and I can turn to him. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's a great word to describe um, God. Um, one of the, you know, there are many words that we can use to describe him. And one of them that I like, obviously, he's our savior, uh, but also our healer. And he can heal us not only, you know, um, when we're sick, but also spiritually in many, many ways. So that's one of my favorite words to describe God, that he is our healer. Uh, Mr. Jared, can you think of any words that you can um, think to describe God? Yeah, I would describe God, describe God as my friend, you know. He's always been there whenever yeah. I needed him, and I can talk to him and just pray and worship. So that's what I do during my worship time, and he's our healer, and he's there for us. So that's how I would describe him in my own words. So here's another reason why we worship God, and that's because what he has done and does for us, right? And Psalms 126.3 says, Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. You know how Pastor Yvonne and Pastor Corinne have just said, you know, he's been there and he's provided for us and he's been our healer and he's done amazing things for all of us. And I just want to ask him real quick, what is something that you can remember that he's done for you during this quarantine time? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, it's easy to focus on the negative things that have happened during this time, but there have been a lot of good things that have come out of it as well. I know for for us, for like me and Pastor Sean, 
um, Pastor Sean was about to lose his job, and God provided a brand new job for him. So that's mm-hmm. something that God did for us that has made us really thankful. That's really good. Um, for me, I would say, you know, even in the things that are happening in the world and how scary it can be sometimes, um, just being with my family, with the boys and my husband and spending, you know, having that extra family time together and also the times that I have been afraid or, or upset or, you know, anxious about what is happening right now with the virus, um, God has always been there. You know, I know that I can go to him and he gives me peace. So um, that has been um, amazing to experience his love and his his uh, comfort, you know, him comforting, comforting me and, you know, just feeling him, his presence, even in my house when things are bad or things have happened and um, he's always there. So that's yeah. good. Um, well, I have one more point that I wanted to share about why we should worship God before we get into some practical ways to worship God. Um, and that is because we love him. Um, like I was saying earlier, I think it's so important to remember that we should worship God even when we don't feel like it. And I think if we're all honest, there are days when we're just like, I'm not feeling it. Even like when we come to church on Sundays when we're here in the building, it's like, I'm just not feeling it. I'm in a bad mood. I've had a bad week. I just don't feel like worshiping God. Um, But I think that we need to remember that we worship God because we love him. And I have a verse to share about that. It's Matthew 22, 37. And let's see. It's right here. It says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, and all your mind. So I think if you notice there, it doesn't say like when you feel like it or sometimes or on a good day, it says just to do it, to love God with everything that you have. So I think that's really important. So I wanted to know what you, what you guys think. Um, What are some things that we can say or do to show God that we love him? I think we can just be kind to everyone. I think that's a big way that we can show that we love God, you know, because people will see that and they'll see the love that we have for God and they'll be like, well, there's something special about him. And I think God really appreciates appreciates that. So, Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's great, especially, you know, in times like right now, <laughs> you know, that everything's a mess out there, you know, loving others. Um, it's a great, great way to show that we love God and sharing his love with people. Um, for me, it would be um, spending time with him, you know, and I know that sometimes we might feel like, I think you said, oh, we go to church and we might be like rushing out the door or like mad or upset because we can't find our shoes and things like that. I've been, well, not my shoes, but my kids' shoes. Um, You know, it's like we're rushing, like heading out the door and almost in a bad mood. And then we get here uh, and I always think about those things. So I've been upset at home and maybe I was yelling at my kids, you know, and then I come here and I'm like, oh, worshiping God. But, you know, always remembering how good he is and uh, spending time with him in prayer in the word, you know, really knowing what he is telling us and taking the time to listen to what he has to say uh, to us in the hard times and the good times as well. Not only come to him when things are bad. Yeah, that's so good. Um, I would add on to the spending time with him thing. Um, For me, I really try to take time first thing in the morning to spend time with God, do a little devotion time, Um, in the morning, a little bit of prayer time in the morning before I start my day. And that really like sets the tone for my day. Um, And I feel it when I don't do it. Um, I feel like my day doesn't go as well because I didn't set the tone correctly. Um, But then also I love to end the day with just like a prayer time. And Pastor and Sean and I usually pray right before we go to bed. So kind of like starting the day and ending the day, not necessarily with like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, but even if it's just like a couple minutes. I think it really makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just taking the time and, like you said, setting the day, you know, starting the day, and that really, you know, changes your mood, and it really does. And I guess it moves your focus from 
what is happening or what you're going to deal with that day, but knowing that God is always there and whatever he's speaking to you um, on that day. So I think that's amazing. I am also doing devos. And it's also a great thing to do, guys, to have maybe your siblings or your parents and do a Bible study together. Um, I think it's a great way to keep each other accountable and just be like, hey, so what did you learn today? What did God you know, speak to you today and um, maybe having a journal and all of that. And I mean, we're getting now into like spending time in the word, but it's a great way to worship God. Yeah. Spending time in the word is a way to worship God. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's really cool, too. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys out there. Um, it's not important, like how you worship, like like you were just saying. Yeah. Spending time in the word is a way to worship. So it's not important how you worship or like where you worship, it just is important that we're taking that time Absolutely. to worship God. So I want to get into some, like, ways that we can worship God in, like, different places. Because I think when we think of the word worship, we normally think of, like, worshiping God on a Sunday morning um, in kids' church or in main service and singing and jumping around. And, you know, that's what we think of when we yeah. think of worshiping God. But, you know, what about right now? What, where are some places that we can worship? What are some, like, different ways we can do this right now? Yeah, absolutely. Well, like you said, at church, you know, coming to church, and that's been a while <laughs> since we've been in here, and we hope that we can gather together again. Um, the Bible does say in uh, Matthew eighteen twenty, it says, for where two or three are, are gathered together as my followers, I am there among them. So what God is saying, when Christians gather together, he's promising that his presence is going to be here, that he's going to be here with us. Um, so that is one of the ways. And I think I miss it. Pastor Karen, we all miss being together in kids' church and even in the little kids' rooms. And um, it's a great way to come together as followers of Jesus. And there's just something special about it. And we just can't wait Um you know, to for that day to come, but we also shouldn't just be waiting for church to open again and have that mentality like, okay, well, I don't need to spend time with God or pray or anything until I go to church because that is the wrong mentality to have. You have to spend time with God every day um, because He's good. And, you know, if He is, you know, if you look at Him like as your Savior and and the king and all that he truly is, he deserves it. Like, that's the least we can do, like, to really put things aside and put him first as we begin our day or every day. Um, that's that's a great point. Um, and, you know, one of the places that I just love to worship God that's kind of different. Um, I mean, I think we all love worshiping God here in the building and coming all together together. I think there is something so special and powerful about worshiping God as a group and as a congregation in the church. Um, but there's also something really special about worshiping God outside. And I know it's been so hot lately here, like 115 degrees. Um, so it can be tough to get outside right now at this time of the year. Um, but I just love being outside with God, uh, spending time praying outside, doing my devos outside, um, in the shade, of course. <laughs> um, I love turning on some worship music when I'm outside. Um, a lot of you guys have pools, right? Turn on some worship music when you're out at your pool and spend some time just like thinking about God, worshiping him, um, praying. There's just something really special, um, especially something I love. I haven't always lived here. I lived in Missouri for a long time. I love being able to see the mountains here and just seeing the sunrises and the sunsets and um, just the beautiful nature that's outside. And I think it's such a good reminder of how God is our creator and he created everything. Um, so I think it just makes sense that spending time with God outside is a really special way to connect with him and uh, to just be in his presence. And I wanted to share a couple verses from Psalm. Uh, Psalm 19, 1 through 2 says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. Uh, so that those verses just further um, explain why it's so special to spend time with God outside. Because we can literally see him 
in his creation and we can experience him through that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And right now, you know, we're not coming here as a church as a first point, you know, but right now we're mostly at home and that's where we're doing a lot of worshiping. We're watching church online and I that's one of my favorite places to worship God and just um, pray because even Jesus prayed to God, God alone and prayer is an act of worship. Like in Luke 5, 16, it says, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. So Jesus would go pray by himself, you know, um, and that's something that I like to do. And I want to challenge you guys to do that too, you know, find your own secret place in your room or your house and just pray. Even if it's like in a closet, just just let it be you and God at that moment. And, um, you know, if you have something personal, that's when you can pray f- for that. And, yeah, um, where is the place that you guys like to pray at your house? Um, at my house. Uh so I'm going to have to say definitely if the weather's good enough outside in my backyard, <laughs> um, which is at my house. Um, but if that's not good, I actually really like that. I have this like front room and I have like this little like chair in the front room that's like by my piano that I really like to pray over there, too. That's good. Um, for me, it would be my room in my bedroom. Um, that's where, you know, I spend my time with God and then. But also, I was just thinking as Jared was talking, you know, about being home and all of that. And I was thinking about, you know, when I have to, when I have to clean my house, right? And we have those deep cleaning days, you know, and the boys are great at that, (laughs) helping me with it. You know, I always put worship music on. Um, And it's, you know, I'm cleaning, but just something about, and it doesn't mean that it, it only happens when I'm, I clean my house but you know what I mean like that's one of the the things even though I'm busy and stuff but as I'm walking through my house inside whatever going in one room and the other you know I'm worshiping God and praying throughout my house as I do that and it's it's a special time you know and I think it gets everyone in the mood of like you know in worshiping God you know my husband and the kids too they're listening to songs and we're all singing so it's it's a pretty special time that's really cool <laughs> It's a good way to make cleaning uh, less of a chore. Yeah. Yeah. Worship God while you clean. (laughs) Yeah. So um, those are amazing uh, points uh, that we, that you guys shared. And, um, but just, I want to give you guys a reminder that we can worship God everywhere we go, anywhere we are. I mean, today's takeaway is we can worship God anytime and anywhere. Like, don't be, don't have the mindset of just being, okay, I have to be inside a building. Don't wait until church opens again. I think we've covered that already. Um, But you can worship God at home, outside, in your bedroom, in your closet, anywhere. um, And spend time with him because his presence is not limited to a church building, to a building. He is with you always and you can talk to him anytime. And he listens to you, to your prayers, and he will always be there with you. Um, The important thing is that we take the time to spend time with him. And even if it's just you in your room, you will feel his presence. And it's just a beautiful thing for you guys, for all of us, but for you guys, even being, you know, in elementary or, you know, younger, to spend that time with God and spend that time and feel his presence and just listen to what he has to say to you and speak to you through his word so that's awesome well you know what i want us to just pray and i want to encourage you guys out there to pray with us and i hope that you are thinking of just new and creative ways to worship god even if we can't come together um just to worship god anywhere that you are so i'm going to pray over all of us before we close out Dear Lord, I thank you for all of the kids and all the families who are out there and who are watching this. I just pray that they would have a renewed uh, just love for worshiping you and that you would give give them new ways and new ideas for how they, they can worship you and spend time with you. And Lord, I pray that you would be with all of us, that you would encourage us, and Lord, bring us back together soon. In your name I pray. 
Amen. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.